Well, hello, this is uh, Wayne Visser. I'm a founder and CEO of CSR International, and I'm sitting here today with uh, Suzanne Young, uh, who's an associate professor here at La Trobe University in uh, Australia, in Melbourne. And um, welcome. Uh, Thanks, Wayne. Suzanne, can you start by just saying a little bit about your area of work? Uh, I know that it's in corporate governance, and perhaps um, uh, what what you found about uh, corporate governance in Australia compared uh, to other countries. Okay, um, I've been looking at corporate governance and the intersection of corporate governance and corporate responsibility for a number of years, but firstly I'll talk about corporate governance. Um, we've found that the corporate governance system in Australia is very highly regarded and certainly for interviewing in both UK and Australia and also through Asia and India people look to Australian corporate governance as being something that they quite aspire to. Uh, I think compared to America, for example, there's a lot more flexibility. So it's underpinned by reg um, regulation and it's also got quite good enforcement, not perfect, but quite good enforcement. And people and the business community understand that structure and can work with it. Okay. So they, they talk about it in terms of flexibility, for example, compared to the UK, where both the UK and the Australian corporate governance system have a comply or explain um, procedure. But the interviews I've done have really found that in Australia they're more likely to use the flexibility in the comply or explain to explain to investors and other interested stakeholders why their corporate governance processes or system may differ from what is regarded as best practice. So much more based on context and situation rather than just a tick box or uh, this is the way everyone does it so we'll do it the same way. Okay. And Australia has been one of the countries that has been somewhat sheltered from the global financial crisis. Mm. Do you think there's been any role that corporate governance has played in that? Well, interviews I've done earlier this year have said that they felt business community and other stakeholders felt that corporate governance has had an effect on that. And in a way, it's because of this flexibility that's in the system, in that businesses have had to really look at what their core business is and what their risks are and really embed them into the way they operate and not and so that it's not a tick box mentality, or we've done this or we've done that, but they really have to examine how they do operate. And they've also been quite uh, understanding that regulation is needed and they haven't worked against that, that that's accepted and they'll work within the regulation. So, so I think that's been quite important. Other interviews I've done have also said that they've felt that uh, in Australia that investors, institutional investors and even unions and other stakeholder groups have had some input into what's acceptable practice and it's quite okay in Australia for people to question and for, at, for example, at annual general meetings for board members to have to get up and have to explain why they have to do certain things. Mm. Mm. Where, for example, in the UK, it might have been done more behind the scene, uh, behind closed doors, rather than in an open and transparent manner. Mm. And now you've just uh, launched a master's in responsible business here at La Trobe um, under your directorship. Um, so you must be seeing some kind of a, um, a relationship between corporate responsibility and corporate governance. Um, can you say a bit more about that? Mm. I think the relationship is quite strong. Uh, too long people in corporate governance have seen it as a finance uh, model and really we need to look more broadly at that and look at think about corporate governance as being what the, the organisation is about, what its purpose is. And in doing so, thinking about its purpose, who are its stakeholders and how it meets their priorities, what sort of processes you should put in place to meet their priorities and how you enforce it. Now for me, that's corporate responsibility. So in examining what the organisational purpose is and who its stakeholders are, that is so tightly linked to corporate responsibility, I don't think that you could question that. Mm -hmm. And so for me, the corporate responsibility has to be embedded in the corporate governance system. They're not two systems that, that oppose, they're two together. Mm -hmm. And I've also looked at other systems, organisational systems like industrial relations, for example, or others, which I think there also needs to be a fit between all of those systems and corporate governance. So mm -hmm. you shouldn't have corporate governance as one system. Right. Corporate responsibility is another. And then maybe HR or IR as different systems. There needs to be a fit between all of it. And then mm -hmm. if there's a fit, then stakeholders trust the company. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, people are quite cynical because they see these different systems and different dialogue and different discourse all 
and different members saying different things mm. and then there's confusion in the marketplace. Mm. So I think that's where there definitely needs to be a fit. Right. Mm. Now one of the strategies um, to use corporate governance to further um, corporate responsibility has been the role of the non-executive director. Have you seen that in Australia playing uh, an important part? Mm. That, there's been criticism in Australia, for example, that we don't have enough non-executive, I mean, we don't have, we have too many non-executive directors. So in Australia, for example, you would probably just have the CEO who is the executive director and all the rest on the board are non-executive directors. Well, I think in the UK, you would be more likely to have the CEO, maybe the chief financial officer, maybe the chief operations officer and other people on the board who are not classed as so independent. So I think it differs. So I, so I don't know whether there's a link there between the role of the independent or non-executive directors and corporate responsibility or corporate governance because it's because there's so many independent directors on the board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now you're working in this area of corporate responsibility now in Australia. Do you see any areas where Australia is, you think, taking the lead or being progressive? Mm. Are there any best practices that could be shared with the rest of the world? Mm. Well, I was thinking about this this morning, actually thinking about different sectors and corporate responsibility. And I think in Australia, the finance sector, which is linked to the global financial crisis, of course, the finance sector and the mining sector, the resource sector are quite strong. And they are quite um, strategic, I suppose, in thinking about corporate responsibility and the link to corporate governance. And I think to look at those two industries or those two sectors, you learn a lot. But I think also that's part of to do with our history of Australia in that we've been very dependent on resources. And so there's a strong link with between the resource industry and population spread and population, you know, employment. And I think Australia has looked to the resource sector to lead the way. And if they do the wrong thing, especially with our Indigenous communities, there's a bit of a backlash. Mm. So there's a link to reputation and there's a link to risk. Mm. And there's also because it's been booming, because of the links to China, that, they, that those, this, this sector really needs um, staff, mm. a lot of engineers and people like that. So if they're not doing the right thing, people won't want to work for them. And there's a backlash with our communities in the way that they treat our Indigenous community. So I think the mining sector in that way, through risk to reputation, are really leaders in this mm. area. Mm. And I think also with the finance sector, because uh, that's another sector that historically has been um, in government hands. So I think some of the industry sectors that have been privatised are ones that you see are leading the way as well. Mm -hmm. So in Australia, the finance sector, the Bank of New South Wales was a government-owned bank, the Commonwealth Bank. You also find it with Telstra or other companies that have been, been privatised, that they are, there's an expectation from the Australian public that there's a social licence to operate, that mm -hmm. they've been in government hands, they've been part of Australia's development, they're now privatised, but there's an expectation that they are still part of our development and part of our what we believe should be they should be corporately responsible. Mm. Mm. So I think that's why that those those sectors are stronger in the mm. field. Mm. Okay. Well, thanks very much for your time. Okay. Thank you.